Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do data visualizations, pie charts, by the radar diagrams, bar charts, to see different type of projections and so forth. So there's going to be like a handful of videos. But today I want to start with a pie chart. And specifically, as you can see on my sketch here, I have three different parts. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to have a mouse over effect which basically is gonna misplace the pies a little bit. We're also gonna show a tooltip next to it so we know exactly how much it there is. You know, simulate all those kind of like a nitty gritty, nice to have uh, nice features. And as per usual, let's speed up and transform our sketch static mockup into actual assets. One, two, three, let's go. So I set up all my bits and most of it is just going to be on the right hand side of a pie chart. Next what I would want to do with my pie chart is to create like a dynamic panel for each of the segments. And this is quite important because you are going to want to make them a bit more interactive and possibly misplace them. At the moment it's just a shape um, and I could just do anything I wish to with it. I can maybe even change a color if I want to. Uh, because actually allows so, but we don't really, let's say if a sketch is already ready, you don't really need that. But I'm, um, as usual, just gonna create dynamic panels for each of the segments and just say, let's say this is uh, resource cost and maybe even add a pie in front of it. And then as well for that shape, let me just convert to dynamic panel by same same exact naming convention and this is gonna be affiliate costs and last one of ours is dynamic panel which is let's say profits boom now as we have these bits done the next thing what I want to do is kind of like a mouse over effect. Again, I mentioned that I want to do a tooltip, like a pop-up saying exactly what's the value in it. But I also want to kind of drag it out and misplace that just tiny bit so we can animate it slightly. Now, what I'm going to use for that is probably going to be something like a hotspot. And it's just because otherwise we're going to run into places where, let's see here, the overlaps happen and I could just assign interactions to a specific dynamic panel, that's fine. But if this overlaps the other one, we basically lose like 30% of the actionable space. So what I like to do is actually use hotspots and just kind of like be a little bit communistic here and divide it just like that. So you know, there is some sort of like a sacrifice from both ends but it's gonna be less noticeable by user, especially if they just mouse over on like that tiny edge, if that makes sense, right? But I'm just gonna go ahead and just say, let's say, if I uh, mouse over over this thing, we're just gonna move the, dyna the dynamic panel of the actual segment slightly. So I'm gonna say new interaction and on mouse enter as usual, that's our effect. I'm gonna say move and I'm gonna find the resource cost, that big segment as you can see actually previews it so it's quite easy to target if it's a shape. And I'm gonna move it X axis let's say to maybe by let's say, I don't know, like eight pixels. Let's test it out. And I'm probably also gonna do like um, ease out so it's gonna slow down as we go and maybe do like half a second like so. And I also want another effect, which is basically a new interaction and saying mouse out, let's say. And I want to return it back to its present, to its previous state. So let me select that resource cost and move it, let's say minus eight. And I'm gonna do probably just a bounce effect, let's see. So it returns in a state bouncing in. Let's test it out. And as you can see, it works, right? And I'm gonna do the same with the other segments. So I'm gonna do the same with uh, next. 
and oops not on click we don't need on click we're gonna need mouse enter and again move this is gonna be a bit tricky as you can see affiliate I'm gonna move both directions because this would have to move in an angle kind of like diagonally instead of moving statically x or y axis so I'm gonna move it in both cases, let's say by five pixels or so, or maybe even like, let's say seven, like so. And I'm gonna use the same animation, ease out 400. And I'm gonna return it as well. Mouse out, I'm gonna move it back just like so. I'm just gonna use inversion of a value, so minus seven. And I'm gonna make it bounce again. And we can also test it out to see if it works in unison. So that bounces, that. Okay. I think I know what I did. I would have to invert the values a little bit, but as you can see, it does work to an extent. It's a little bit buggy, but that's okay. So here, I would just need to invert the values on mouse enter like so, and then make the other one like so and lastly just make it the last piece and add another interaction to the bit and say move that last bit by again minus seven now we learned from it so we can actually do it right and i'm gonna also return it to back to the previous state and i'm just gonna go ahead and select seven by seven. Again, bounce effect, neat. And again, testing, 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 always previewing. You can see it sort of works. This is pretty good, I think. It's not perfect, but this could be a bit better. And I think I know what's happening here. I think we just need it to go minus seven on X axis, but also go seven on the Y axis and likewise return with seven and minus seven. So we invert that. Again, it's a, a little bit of spatial work, but as you can see now it works pretty well. I mean, you can adjust it to make it a bit more symmetric like here, let's say the spacing is not, you know, necessarily perfect, but it's up to you what you want to do with it. Maybe you want to even misplace it even more, or perhaps you actually want to expand the segment. And now how you would do that is probably you would just create another uh, panel. So let's say, let me actually show you right away. I would just go into the segment and would create another state and just make that segment just slightly bigger. Like, so let's say I can add an action and I can just say, say change panel state, resource cost to panel two. We don't need any of those bits because it's, and I'm gonna move it first so it changes first and then it returns to the previous state and mouse out just like the usual. State one and that's it. And now let's test it out if actually my theory works out here. Boom. As you can see, it does zoom in. It's a bit drastic, but you actually get the drill. Now, I don't really want it and I don't really want to go that route. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those bits. But you know now how to do so. Maybe you want to make it a little bit more subtle. It's up to you. But I'm gonna go back and just make misplacements instead of, you know, a distortion of sorts. Another thing what we're missing is ability to, let's say, if we mouse over over profits that that would also move. So I would just copy the same exact hotspot and do nothing. Just leave it there. As you can see, the behavior is already baked in into that hotspot. So all we need to do is just copy those across for our legend for our key of a graph like so. And those are gonna be functional. I'm gonna show you in a minute. But before that, I want to also add the tooltips. So you know exactly where we're headed and you know that we were aiming to do so. So I'm gonna drag one by one 
I might just make it white, let's say, or maybe just a little bit grayish. Again, play with uh, the actual outlook yourself. You can add shadows. Um, I like to add a little bit of shadow, but quiet, flat, like so. It doesn't look too bad, like so, and then maybe attach it. You also would want maybe to add an arrow to it, so that's totally fine. It's up to you if you want to do that. I'm just gonna keep it like so, uh, just an attachment, and l I'm gonna add, let's say, a number. So I'm gonna take one of these bits, which are used in, in other segments, like so, let's say, 3 million, and I'm gonna add that as well, and maybe just slightly resize, so it's a bit more consistent with our message across. As you can see, the revenue split is that. And this is our profit, so we don't really need to edit it much. But if you're on, let's say, in FinTech or designing different products for different dashboards, this is going to be your bread and butter refactorer. Have no doubt in that. So I think you're going to benefit from this lesson a lot. But let me just now group those bits into one so again dynamic panels our bread and butter i'm gonna place it next to our bit like so and i'm just gonna say plus plus tool like pi tool tip let's say so we have some consistency profits i'm gonna just make three copies so we have it for every single bit of ours and just renaming it really quickly before I forget. Boom. And I'm just gonna quickly maybe edit it. And next, we're just gonna show them. So let me actually hide them first and foremost. I totally forgot. Hidden icon is under style panel. Like so, I just selected all of them and hid them. So we're gonna go ahead and select hotspot and then add action. And as you can see on mouse enter for this specific book, we're gonna show affiliate costs and we don't need to animate we need it immediately so it's snappy and then add another action where we hide it uh, like so hide and here we can fade it maybe in 200 so it's just slightly a little bit out and do so for every single bit before we move on and I preview it one thing is that if you remember we just copied these bits I'm gonna delete them because we added more functionality so the easiest bit instead of copying that those functions in and interactions in just again copy it in you're gonna find yourself doing it more often than you think but that's okay because it's so easy to do in Axure all these three things now are functional just like the ones on an actual pie chart so let's preview and see if our pie chart is actually functional. Boom, boom, boom. As you can see, I'm just mouse overing the actual legend, the key of a graph. And then I can just go bit by bit as well and it's exactly the same behavior. And that's how you do it. So simple as that. If you like this video, as usual, like, subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment down below if you have other ways to do so or if you have questions. And again, we're gonna go through bar charts next, spider or radar diagrams next, also projection diagrams where we can tweak different bars and you know, outcomes change. So if you're into FinTech or data visualization, this is your bread and butter and I hope it's gonna be useful. And as usual, thank you so much for your attention and I'm gonna see you next time.